This is Mr. Jern, and I'm going to talk to you about Project Lead the Way, Principles of Engineering, Project 1.3.4, the Renewable Installation Project, Distance Learning Version. Now, this project, uh, if you were to do it in the classroom, it's all about thermal di thermodynamics, and what you would do is you would plan and design and build some uh, insulation from recyclable material, and essentially what the project, the experiment of the project would, uh, would involve is taking the measurement of the temperature of a box where you would heat it up from room temperature to a certain temperature. And then you would see how long it takes for the temperature in the box to return to normal. And you would run that, that, that test twice. You would run it with the insulation and once without the insulation just to see how effective that insulation is. So the distance learning is going to simulate that a little bit uh, you, and you're going to get some data. You'll be able to analyze the data. You just won't be able to actually test any, anything at all. So uh, here is uh, some goals of this project. Just You can just read through this on yourself. Uh, a little bit of information about uh, energy in general and, and consumption of energy in the U.S. So very interesting stuff. Definitely worth a read. I would definitely take a look at that. The equipment we're going to use for the distance learning is your graphical analysis software. You've used it before. Uh, it's that it's 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 that um, uh, we used it for measuring the force when we were doing mechanical advantage and some other things. Bunch of resources. You don't necessarily need to worry about this at this time. The rubric is important, of course, and these are going to be uh, interspersed as needed throughout the the, uh, the 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 website right here. So. Uh, here is your actual procedure. Make sure you read all this. Make sure you get all this down. Remember, in your engineering notebook, you want to give a lot of context. You're not just going to just put things in your engineering notebook just out of place or, or out of context. You want to make sure that it's very clear what's going on. So um, the insta installation design, this is the thing that you're actually, unfortunately, not going to do, uh, where you would uh, you would design and build some insulation. In this case, here are the uh, characteristics of the, inf of the insulation that are being built. Uh, this one for the distance learning version was just uh, seven layers of alternating cardboard and bubble wrap. So an insulation, right? So here you're going to want to record the 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 box measurements that I was talking about. So here's the box. You can kind of see there's a light bulb in there, an old-fashioned light bulb. It's going to warm up the box real good. There is uh, it's a it's a plastic box, and there's a little bit of insulation around it, but mostly the insulation is going to be on the top is where we're going to put it. So here is the measurement of the length of the box. Okay, and these are centimeters. So in order to get into meters, you're going to have to divide the centimeters by 100, okay? Here is the measurement of the length of the box. So you had the width and the length. Once again, measured in centimeters. So you're going to have to divide by 100 in order to get meters. Uh, and here is the depth of the box. So you have your, uh, it doesn't say this is the, the length, but there's two widths basic, basically and the depth of the box. Once again, measured in centimeters you can kind of see this and uh, you're going to want to record these in meters so notice that this is a meter so all those centimeters divide by 100 in order to get meters in order to convert it to meters record all the dimensions in your engineering notebook okay just like this okay then the analysis of the data the collection and the analysis of the data so you can see here this is what's going to happen you're going to I have this box with the this is a temperature probe that's sticking in there. It's going to measure the temperature inside the box. And you're going to, like I said, do this once without the insulation and once with the insulation just to see how well that works. Uh, it's going to walk you, it talks about how you're going to measure information or measure the temperature. You can see, make sure you read this, even though you're not going to actually physically do this. Uh, you, you still need to know what, what happened. So 30 degrees higher. So make sure you read through this and then make a prediction. What do you think the uh, temperature change is going to be like if you were to draw a graph of it? Okay, so uh, in, your, in your engineering notebook, predict how the temperature will change inside the box during the experiment. So what's going to happen? 
So based on the experiment, light bulb's gonna get turned on. What's gonna happen to the temperature? The light's gonna get turned off. What's going to happen to the temperature? Okay. There's also a, um, I'm gonna scroll back up, I apologize. It's not here, okay. Okay, so uh, so that's it. That's what you wanna do. What's gonna happen, happen to us? So just it, prediction, it doesn't have to be perfect. So uh, as time goes on, so your x-axis is gonna be time and your y-axis is going to be temperature. So what do you think is gonna to happen to temperature as time goes on, all right? So there you go. With insulation, or I'm sorry, without insulation, and then with the insulation added. So two predictions, okay? Scrolling down a little bit, it's gonna to talk to you, okay, where's the temperature? Now, uh, we're gonna to have to use graphical analysis. And we've used it before. These are the data files right here. This is the, the data with the cover only. It's, a, it's an acrylic, clear plastic cover. And then here is the data with that cover and the insulation on top of it. And if you click on it, it should download it and um, it should download it to, you just open it up, you should just be able to click on it. And ideally it just opens up in, in graphical analysis. If not, well then let's, then what you're gonna wanna do is I'm going to, let me just open up graphical analysis without that and show you what happens if you don't get that to open. So graphical analysis, for near graphical analysis, you'll open it up. And then by now you should have downloaded it. So you're gonna to go to choose the file. You go to your downloads and you can see the downloads right here. And there we go. So click on it and you get your data open. That's for near graphical analysis. So let me just scooch that over so you can see the screen again. Um, <clears throat> so you download those files. You don't actually have to open them right away. Um, so now what you're gonna do is, uh, oh, I apologize about that. So here's here's a little bit of a resource on graphical analysis and how to use it. I'm going to kind of hit the main points of it uh, just as we're going through it. So here is the data that you're going to want to record in your engineering notebook. Here's the the power of the of the light bulb. It's only a 25 watt light bulb. So then you're going to want the initial temperature, the maximum in, is internal, sorry, the internal temperature, and the final inter internal temperature. You're going to want the room temperature which if you look at the, and I'll show you in a minute, there, there's a red line and a, and a blue line. The red line is the internal temperature. You can see how it goes up and then comes down. And the blue line is another thermometer measuring the room temperature. So make sure you record that data. And then how long did it take to cool down? So how do you get all that information, you may ask, and that's a fantastic question. Well, if, you, if you've got vernier graphical analysis, let me just embiggenize this a little bit so you can see some things. Um, if you put your, uh, if you just click on the line anywhere, you could, I don't know if you could see this on the screen, but if you click on it, it'll tell you the temperature at any given time. It'll tell you both the red, in this case I just clicked and I got 34.4 degrees Celsius, and it will tell you the blue at the same time, 19.1 degrees Celsius. In addition, if you scroll down, if you scroll down, if you look down at the x-axis, it'll tell you the, the time. Okay, so just click anywhere you want, and it'll tell you the data. I'll tell you the, the data for the for both temperature probes as well as the time. So three minutes in, nine minutes in, 22 minutes in, 36 minutes in. As you can see, if we were doing this in class, it would pretty much take the entire period. So you use that to get all this information recorded all in your engineering notebook, all right? So you're gonna wanna do this for both sets of data for the one without the insulation and for the one with the insulation. And make sure you label it very clearly, all right? You're gonna to wanna to also record the mean room temperature. Well, you got that, I gotta explain that. Um, so you, could, you can also view statistics from the graph tools. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's open that up. So down here is the graph tools window that it's referring to. You can see that and you can click view statistics. And it's going to tell you all sorts of things. I'll tell you. So here's the red, and here's the mean temperature of the red. That's not super useful because the temperature goes up and down. You don't really care about the average temperature. But the average temperature of the blue one, if you scroll down just a little, if you scroll down there, it'll tell you the mean temperature of the blue one, which is kind of nice because it fluctuates, I'm sure. And if you click on it at any given time, it might not be exactly 
you know, it'll change from, from click to click just slightly. So this will give you the mean temperature of the blue line, which is the, um, the room temperature probe. All right, so there you go. So that's what you can do for the room temperature. So then we move on to heat transfer. And by the way, all these things in your engineering notebook, engineering notebook, you can just put little title headers just like this, heat transfer. Okay, and we talk about that because the concept of heat transfer across a boundary is everywhere. We use it for everything, okay? Or it's in everything. It's a consideration for everything, just about everything that engineers have to take into account. Um, so the thermodynamic systems and heat transfer um, resource that, ooh, wrong one. <laughs> that, if you click on that, will bring you to this um, page right here. And it's a very good review of uh, what you need to know for this. It's kind of, it, it breaks it down. We haven't talked about it in class, but it, it talks about thermodynamic dynamic systems, which we did talk about systems. And it talks about the conceptual model. Okay, it talks about the surroundings, the boundary line between the system and the surroundings, and your input and your output. Okay, it talks about an example here. This is definitely very um, important, so make sure you read through that. Um, it talks about how a stove works in the air in the room and, so, and how it gets out in the surroundings. Okay, the heat box, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about here, that heat box with that light bulb in there. Um, and it talks about how the light bulb air warms the air in the box and how that heat is escaping into the surroundings. How does the insulation help? Well, that's what this whole uh, thing is all about. Heat transfer, here's a refrigerator. Okay, heat transfer, very important for a refrigerator. A mm, couple of examples and talk about R value at the, at the end, about the uh, insulation value. So check that out. Make sure you uh, read through that if you have any questions about heat transfer. Just skim through it, read through it deeply. Uh, you don't have to include anything in your engineering notebook about that. There's, we're not taking notes. But what you do need to do is sketch a system model for the heat box during the cooling phase. Identify the important characteristics of the system in your model, including system with components as appropriate. So label the parts. Inputs and outputs as appropriate. During the cooling part of the cooling phase where the light bulb is turned off, what are the inputs? What are the outputs? Where is the heat? Is he coming in? If so, where? Is he going out of the box? If so, how? Where? Where's the boundary? Okay, make sure you label that just like in the, just like in the picture in this link here. Uh, and then make sure you label the energy flows. What's going on with the heat? Okay, what's happening to the heat? Where is it going? Give me that information there. So that's going to be a, just a picture. You only have to do one. Uh, just of the of the heat box in general. Now we're going to evaluate your the insulation. Obviously, it's not yours; you didn't build it, but we're still going to evaluate it. Um, and you're going to get some numbers here. Um, make sure that you read through it. So here's some constants: the density of the of the air. All right, is this in case you need it? And the specific heat capacity of the air right here. If you've done the equations, then the specific heat capacity should look pretty familiar to you. Um, now what you want to do is calculate the mass of the air being heated. Uh, that's something that you're going to have to, so how do you calculate the mass if you know the volume of the air, in other words, the meters squared, and you know the density, okay? If you need help with that, let me know. That's definitely something you can Google and look up or talk to each other, and, um, and you can figure that out. Then you have to calculate the energy gained by the air in the box with the added insulation during heating okay so once again you're going to be calculating q done that before and here's a little hint okay that should look familiar to you i hope uh, so you're going to calculate the energy gained with the insulation then energy lost okay once again q uh how are you going to find that once once the uh once the, during the cooling period, once the light bulb is turned off, okay? Find the net energy retained in the box. Okay, once again, all this stuff, this is gonna you know, take some thought and some talking, to, talking through with your teammates. Okay, all this goes in your engineering notebook. Then, interestingly, we're gonna compare it with other teams to verify our calculations. Okay, so there may be more than three teams. I haven't quite decided on that yet, but that depends on what we're gonna be doing. All right, and then basically what you're going to do is 
what is the accepted cue? Maybe team one screwed the whole thing up and their cue they told you is pretty bad and they we sh don't listen to us. All right. Or you can just take the average of all of them and decide. Maybe you take the average of all of them except for team one because maybe they messed it up. All right. No offense to team one. I don't even know who you are yet. I have decided on teams. <laughs> so then finally, reflection and conclusion questions is how we're going to end this. So make sure you write those in your engineering notebook and answer them. And as usual, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. And uh, we'll take a few days on this. Good luck. And I'll see you later.